Hello, my name is David Kramer, and this is Culture. Um, this is going to be Culture on El Salvador. Why this is pertinent to me is because, as I've said before in class, I'm from El Salvador. I was adopted when I was about two and a half months. Um, I was born during the height of a civil war in El Salvador that lasted for about 12 years. Um, the country is very beautiful, as you can see in this picture. Uh, I took this picture on the top of a, a mountain there. You can see the landscape. There's a large volcano in the background. But as much as this country is beautiful, there is still a ton of poverty, a lot of crime and danger throughout the country as remnants from that war. Here are some pictures uh, of culture shock. Um, here in the United States, we have everything pretty much at our fingertips as far as you know, safety, technology, sanitation. Uh, some pictures on the left of some houses of families of maybe three, four, five children. And as you can see, they're just you know held together by rope, stabilized by logs with sheet metal as their roof and some tarps as their walls, so they don't really look all that stable. Um, as far as the sanitation, the picture on the right, uh, it was a picture of the bathroom that I took at the local school. It's just elevated cement. Another thing as far as sanitation for myself and culture shock was that I, anything that I drank had to be like bottled water. Um, the water there is very dirty and we could get sick if we drank it. Even if when we were at our safe house, if we brushed our teeth and rinsed the toothbrush and water from the faucet, you know, they advised us not to even do that. So trying to remember to do all these things so we wouldn't get sick was like a job in itself. And then the picture on the bottom right is a picture of the kids from the school. Um, communication wise, you know, as far as even being able to communicate with the kids or the people of the country. I, you know, I don't speak Spanish all that well, so not being able to communicate with them and express, you know, my feelings toward them and them talking to me was very tough. And then technology, they do have cell phones, they are a little advanced. Um, but me personally, like I have Verizon and Verizon is not noticed as a, you know, a prominent carrier in El Salvador, so I wasn't able to use my phone all week. They do have computers and stuff at the libraries, but the libraries are located in the city. So these kids that, some of them do have Facebook, but they have to like walk all the way into town or take a bus hours to go in to check their Facebook status. So could you imagine having to do that? I, I, that would be the biggest headache. Uh, while we were there, some of these girls here, as you can see in the pictures, put on a little presentation for us. Uh, they danced some of their native dances with their cultural music in the background and they wore these dresses. So these are examples of uh, material culture. These dresses, as you can see, are very colorful. They're all handmade and they're passed down throughout their family. In this picture here is another example of material culture on a more everyday basis. If you notice in this picture, all of the men are wearing pants. I guess it's kind of more of a norm, but after high school, um, or during high school, excuse me, after grade school, it's, it's you know, custom throughout the culture to only wear pants for the men. Unless they're playing sports, they wear pants all year round. And it's like 80, 90 degrees. And to fit into the culture, I as well had to wear pants. And I hate the heat, so this was also another example of culture shock for myself. But, you know, if I were to go there and wear shorts, one, I would feel uncomfortable because I'd feel out of place. And two, you know, I, I wouldn't want to disrespect, you know, their beliefs and their culture. Now these kids, as you can see, are a little better dressed. Um, this isn't a very poverty-stricken area. This is actually at one of the uh, universities there in the city. Religion is a big part of uh, El Salvador's culture. There is a few different religions that are prominent throughout the country. Christianity, though, is the biggest. And in the top left-hand corner, you can see a picture of a woman placing flowers on the tomb of Archbishop Oscar Romero. He is like a saint to these people. He was the voice for the people during the war. And anybody who practices Christianity um, in their house, even their desolate houses like I showed you earlier, will have a picture of him or a relic of some sort. He is, like I said, the be-all end-all for them. Um, and it's very common to see someone like that lady placing flowers on his tomb every day. It's not just because of his feast day, it's not just because it's Sunday. I mean, these people take their faith very serious. And on every Sunday, they go to church and they walk miles from the mountainsides 
to you know the small valleys wherever they live. They commute either by foot. They get a you know a few trucks together and pack 40 people in the back of a flatbed. But they uh, take their religion very serious. They are very spiritual, and they really do, <clears throat> like I said, practice their faith on a daily basis. Here's another picture of subculture. Like in the United States, we have football and hockey and basketball, and we have our teams that we enjoy. In El Salvador, it's mainly soccer or football americano. Um, throughout the country, you'll see these little soccer courts. Uh, in the United States, you probably see more basketball courts. They do have some basketball courts there. We did see some while we were on the, our trip, but all that was being done on them was the kids playing soccer. They like I didn't see one basketball even present. Uh, at the playgrounds and it's not only little kids I mean even older people when they're outside out front of their house you know the women children um, they kick the ball around they, they love soccer there and uh, they also like I said like they take their faith serious they take their uh, soccer serious as well <clears throat>